Hi everyone, this is Kim Rulings from SpinFX IT. I'm going to take you through in the next uh, 30 to 40 minutes our enhancements around uh, Easy STP. I'm also going to be joined by Matthew Curtis, who's our National Consulting Manager. So let's have a look at today's agenda. Uh, I'm going to start off with a brief overview of what has been delivered by SAP around Single Touch Payroll 2 where we have updated our solutions to cater for these changes, where Easy STP fits into the process and what's new in Easy STP to cover off those uh, phase two changes. Then I'm going to jump into the solution and do a live demo and we're going to close off with an interview with Matt Curtis on how clients can benefit from this. Matt joins us with a wealth of knowledge in payroll uh, similar to myself, and uh, we're going to talk about, you know, how our solutions would help those um, payroll clients of ours. So as, let's start off with looking at what SAP has delivered for single touch payroll phase two. There is a number of new STP2 configuration tables around employer and employee uh, transactional details, uh, employee payment information, and uh, STP2 error log information. They've also delivered uh, new income type classifications in your InfoType 188 area, and those are shown on the screen now. And another screen just to show where they would um, these new inco income type classifications would reside in your InfoType 188. They obviously will also flow through to your um, cluster, your ACRT cluster that holds information that gets reported through for single touch payroll and the big one that we're all very familiar with is the way that uh, gross has been dealt with which has been revised for single touch um, payroll phase two uh, there's been an introduction of a number of new subcategories and many of the existing subcategories uh, have been delimited um, or split out this is a screenshot from the sap uh, single touch payroll presentation so as you can see from here, the evaluation class 13 that holds the wage types flagged for reporting for STP, there's a number of new subcategories. Many have been removed, some have been split, and others have been changed. And how that resides down to the actual splitting of the gross payments uh, through those uh, through those subcategories. So let's focus on what changes SpinFX IT have made to support these changes. We obviously would have updated our Easy Reporter, our flagship solution, uh, which is around real-time operational transactional reporting to cover off those areas. So we've added in those new Info Type 188 uh, classifications. Uh, we've also added those into a pa our payroll results area to for any reporting from the ACRT. Uh, Within our uh, Easy Reporter solution, we have another data sources which we um, introduced for the original single touch payroll phase one. And we've um, also expanded that to cover off the STP phase two configuration tables. And you can see a screenshot of where they reside on your up on the PowerPoint now. So, how can Spinifex IT Easy STP solution help? Um, for our clients that uh, are migrating to STP phase two. So we've got a whole lot of reports around data validation prior to migrating. So as you're all familiar, the configuration and the data is key to ensuring a smooth transition. Uh, we're going to support you through that STP phase two implementation over the uh, to cover off these areas around migration and go live verification. So we're talking about uh, wage type configuration, employee data configuration, and also um, the payroll results. And then obviously the, the main purpose here is around the ongoing reconciliation and reporting. Where do we fit into the overall um, process? So many of you would be familiar with this um, SAP uh, presentation. The real areas that we focus on and where we fill those gaps is around, uh, you can see there's some green and blue um, rectangles, squares. It's really around that master data configuration, um, validating that that is correct, 
checking your wage type configuration, looking at your payroll results, uh, reconciling those and ensuring that you, when you run your STP submission file in test mode, that you can actually call that data through and do a full reconciliation to ensure it's true and correct and you have included all your employees before you submit to the ATO. So an example of how we're going to support our clients for transitioning, uh, this is just a really simple diagram, but it talks about those clients, we've got many clients that are still um, using single touch payroll phase one and have a deferral for phase two. So as you uh, can appreciate, as you move through and you transition and you implement uh, STP phase two, you're going to still, that could be partway through a financial year, it could be at the start of a financial year, but you're going to have your pay periods that are still being processed. So obviously you would go through your project where you're copying prod back to test, you're upgrading your system, you're installing SAP single touch phase two packs, uh, they are doing all your configuration around master data, waste shop changes, you're converting your clusters, and then you're running new payrolls and you're testing that STP phase two. So in the uh, the area from configuration is really where we, we cover you off. So I'm going to take you through that in more detail. So from uh, 2022 R1P5 release, we have been introducing, as SAP have uh, released their single touch payroll phase two changes, uh, we continue to update our solution. So let's have a look at what's new in our solution. So for those clients that haven't upgraded, um, this is what our new menu looks like. Uh, so we do have a new main menu. So you can see for clients that were using this, uh, the easy payment so summary solution, uh, they'll still have access to that folder. Under the easy STP uh, folder, you can see some additional uh, subfolders there. So what we're trying to do here is to continue to support our clients that are still in STP phase one, um, supporting our clients that have transitioned to STP phase two and the ones that are already live. So you still will have access to your phase one reports, but you will see some additional phase two reports there. So under our um, configuration checks area, we've um, got some reports that are going to check your wage shops configured correctly, those evaluation class 13 subtype changes, ensuring that your uh, table that holds the ABN details has been configured correctly and report on any new wage type mapping categories. This is what our configuration review menu looks like. So you do have the ability to run any of these and read across uh, STP phase one and phase two. Uh, we've introduced a couple of new reports, one around missing permanent address details and one around uh, exceptions for employee master data. So you'll see those in uh, the configuration review menu. For uh, our gross reconciliation area around running those new payrolls, so we're talking about still that that transitioning period for those clients that are implementing phase two, uh, you do have the ability to reconcile your ACRT total gross for the wage types flagged for STP phase two and the wage types that are not flagged for S STP phase two. So what this is doing is the first part of our reconciliation to ensure that um, your configuration changes in preparation for phase two are going to be covered off um, as they were with phase one. You'll see a new submenu for payroll results. So we have moved some of these re reports around. Uh, this used to be located in a different area, this STP gross reconciliation, but we've now moved it under payroll results. So You'll still have access to the other reports, the RT versus CRT versus ACRT and so forth, just located in a separate area. <clears throat> and once your STP tables are updated by the single touch payroll process, you have the ability obviously to do that full reconciliation um, to ensure that the clusters that hold the information that needs to be sent through in your STP submission file 
um, is true and correct. And we've introduced a couple of additional reports to reconcile down to an employee and a wage type level. So those new reports are catered for in the STP reconciliation phase two sub menu. Changes that we've also introduced for the STP2 gross tax reconciliation, um, we've got a new report there. So prior in phase one, we had uh, this report showing under a submit event or a update event. We've now just built one report to cater for whether it is a submit or update event, and you can also run this for test or live runs. We've also, also got some additional uh, reporting. So obviously reporting on the STP cluster details for the employee, reporting on any STP overrides, uh, general reporting around those new configuration tables and reporting cross lump sum E and obviously the income statement um, being replicated. Again, as with all of our um, solutions where we can, we've introduced shortcuts to the SAP single touch payroll programs. The idea is that you're just in one solution um, and you're, you've got all of um, your programs that relate to STP in that one area. So just to summarize, um, before I jump into the live demo, uh, you need to upgrade your Easy STP solution. So same as SAP, when any uh, changes are introduced, you obviously you're upgrading SAP with those support packs around single touch payroll too. You also need to upgrade uh, upgrade our solution um, to be able to cater for that as well. Um, ideally, would like clients to always be on the latest release, which is that one highlighted twenty twenty three R one P one but we have uh, introduced patches for previous releases. It's always important to try and be on the latest release. Future roadmap enhancements. So we obviously um, were delivering the bare minimum requirements based on the SAP single touch payroll phase two changes. Uh, we continue to, to build out um, additional reports um, that will be flowing through for flowing through over the next few months in regards to further enhancements around the easy stp solution whenever sap um, bring out any changes or fixes we make sure that we're aware of those and we're capturing those and and um, continuing to upgrade the solution as well so it's really important to make sure that you subscribe um, which is this one here on the left hand side you can subscribe to easy suite changes that will mean that you will get notification on any upgrades, uh, any patches that we're sending through. So thanks for joining through the presentation. I'm going to now jump into our, our solution and take you through some of those items that I mentioned. Right, so now I'm just going to jump into our demo system just to show you some of those changes that I mentioned. Uh, so if I look at the Easy STP menu, you can also see that we're catering for concurrent employment. Uh, so we've delivered our first release for those clients, the CE clients. Uh, this is the menu that I was taking you through. So if we open up the configuration review menu to start with, let's run the STP groupings report. So this is a report that's looking at all the wage type flagged under evaluation class 13. So from an audit perspective, ideally you would want to do this before you go live with STP2, but also on a regular basis, say once a year before your financial year starts. It has all of your evaluation class 13 subtypes, including those new ones in regards to STP2, uh, a description of those, and obviously all your individual uh, wage types flagged for those. So a really good one to run. Uh, nice and easy to read. You can download to Excel and you can do your validation from an audit perspective to make sure the, the wage types are configured correctly. On the flip side, we also have um, a wage types not flagged for STP. So this your wage types are either going to be on one of these reports. So either going to be on the one that's flagged 
or it's going to be on this one. It can only be on one or the other. If you do see a wage type on this one that should be flagged for reporting for STP, um, then obviously you would follow your uh, your uh, internal business process around how you would get that wage type flagged. The other reports there that I took you through in the presentation are still um, available as well. Under the payroll results uh, validation folder, this is um, the first part of your reconciliation. So we always talk about reconciliation in two steps, very similar to what we introduced for easy payment summaries, is that once you have payroll results available and your ACRT cluster is updated, you can run this report. So it's run by payroll area and payroll period. And what this report is going to show me is the latest ACRT clusters for all my employees based on the payroll area, payroll period I've run with a breakdown for, um, under the various ABN details. And it's going to show me the total gross. And the reason we start with the total gross, that's always our baseline starting point. We want to make sure that all the individual wage types that are flagged for STP uh, reporting uh, reconcile back to the employee's total gross. And where there is a difference, this report's going to highlight that. Now, this difference could be um, a number of things. It could be that a wage type has not been uh, set up correctly, hasn't been configured. Or it could be something like uh, this one where we have a difference um, for an employee and we just want to cater for that difference in the gross not on STP column. What I mean by that is things like employee reimbursements, travel reimbursements, so those type of things that might accumulate to employees' total gross but don't get reported through. So normally this would be something that many of our payroll um, managers, payroll team members do in Excel. So this is actually doing it for you. So really what you want to do, <clears throat> run this report, identify those, those differences and deal with those differences. So either identifying whether it's a wage type configuration, whether it just needs to be moved into this gross not on STP uh, bucket or column within the report. We're not going to touch your configuration. It's reading um, to cater for ensuring that all your employees reconcile. And once you do that as a one-off activity, then each subsequent pay period, you should be able to run this report and do a quick check to make sure all your employees reconcile. Now, some of these areas I'm talking about, we actually do detailed training on how to actually use this solution. So if you if you need training for your team, then please reach out to um, Matt or myself and we can discuss what that looks like. The second part of the uh, STP reconciliation is after you run your, uh, generate your STP2 submission file, so let's just run this for our current uh, pay period. The event type that you select, and most clients run submit event every pay period, um, and the way that which you selected it, and this has been run in test run mode, once you run this, you can run the second part of the reconciliation in Easy STP to ensure that all your employees that should be included are included and that there is no variances. So that will give you comfort that uh, the person who is signing off on the actual submitting of that data um, has got uh, a full reconciliation in front of them to confirm that all of those employees are included and that there is no variances. So let's just have a look at this one. So I've run this one under our STP uh, reconciliation phase two folder. This is the one that I walk through in the presentation as well. Uh, it's the one that has the changes where you can cater for submit or update event and test or live run. Given the way I have run my STP submission file, you need to run this report exactly the same way. And the reason for that is what it's going to do is call through 
the individual gross payments from that first part of the reconciliation that I did from the payroll results, the ACRT, now call through the STP submission test data to make sure as a whole do all my employees reconcile. So what you're going to see here, again, um, this would be run exactly the same way as you run your STP uh, submission file, payroll area, payroll period. <clears throat> so I can see here that I have two uh, ABN details. I've got my total gross payments and I've got my STP payments in my file and I can see I've got some differences here. You also meet um, automatically have the tax details come through because we've run the STP submission file. So let's look at um, what this should look like. Okay. So if I look at my uh, first employee, <clears throat> what I'm looking at here is that I have uh, some details in my ACRT cluster. So I've got year-to-date gross payments for this employee. But on my STP submission file, which is this one here, I've got zero amount coming through. Now, that usually can relate to either an invalid character in that employee's master data. Uh, it could also be a wage type configuration issue. What we're wanting to see is something like this. So we're wanting to see that this employee, if we look at their ACRT here, um, we can see that they have a wage type base salary and a wage type for higher duties, and that total equals 7400 7, And then we can also see that on the STP file, that same value appears. So what this is showing me is that employee is included in the STP submission file and that the value that's going to be reported through to ATO matches my ACRT. And if we look over on the far right-hand side, we're going to have the same for the PAYG um, income tax from the ACRT cluster and the same value that's appearing in the STP submission file. So the idea of running this one, and you can see that I would have to work through the differences, is to, like I said, is to ensure and give assurance um, that all your employees that should be included are included and that they reconcile fully. That's just a real quick overview on uh, what we've introduced there for STP2. Obviously, you know, we would um, love the opportunity to really uh, re spend time and walk through this in more detail with your payroll team so they're getting full maximum value of the actual solution. Thanks for joining me today and please feel free to reach out to Matt or myself if you have uh, any other queries or are interested in getting some training. Hey Matt, thanks for joining today's webinar. You joined Spinifex like five months ago in your role as the National Consulting Manager. Given your extensive background in payroll, I'm going to put you on the spot here. So can you tell me what you find most valuable in the Easy STP solution? Thanks, Kim. It's it's the ease of use. Easy STP, the menu structure, you start from the top and work down. I think it's really easy to use and to roll out really quick to use as well. Um, and it works out of the box. Excellent to hear. So what's been your experience on the amount of time the payroll team leads and managers take to reconcile the STP data each pay period? It is an extensive piece of work, single touch payroll. Every single pay period, you've got to declare and submit. So I, I know in my experience, you don't reconcile, you don't have time to reconcile every single pay period. You definitely do at the end of financial year, but maybe not every pay period, just due to competing demands. Yeah, I remember those days, so much going on. It's a lot more complex these days. So so that doesn't surprise me at all. But I suppose what concerns me is that the one person that does the declaration for the single touch payroll submission file to be true and correct before it's submitted to the ATO, if I was that person, I would want to see the actual data that has been reconciled each pay period. I totally agree, Kim, especially auditors as well. They would like to know that you've got a good control process around the submission and reconciliation of STP. And that's where Easy STP can come in to assist. 
Excellent. Yeah, that, that's my thoughts too. So how do you see the Easy STP2 assisting clients in their transition? Because we've had a number of clients that um, are already live with STP phase two, but then there's a lot of clients that are actually in project mode and, and others that have deferrals to the end of the year. So, you know, how can you see Easy STP2 helping those clients out? If you're currently on the journey of transitioning to STP2, you can definitely use Easy STP to assist all the way from checking your wage type configurations, making sure what you asked for and the changes that you were requiring in, are mapped to the, the new groupings, as well as once you go live, making sure everything has gone smoothly and submitting that first STP2 file, you're using Easy STP all the way through with your reconciliation reports. So it, it's definitely a, a worthwhile tool to use during your transition and after go live. Great to hear. So if our clients want to learn more or contact you um, to see um, how the consulting team can help out, they can just reach you on the details at the end of this webinar. Definitely. Looking forward to hearing from people. Thanks for that, Matt. Thanks, See Kim. you.